OK, so I make that 12 o'clock. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'll get started. Um, good afternoon. Um, welcome to people joining us live and for those uh, tuning into the recording afterwards. For those of us that are live, just to let you know that this session is being recorded. Um, so if you um, want to turn your cameras off for that reason, then feel free to. I'm Helen, I'm Deputy Chair of the Parkrun Research Board and I'm going to be chairing this session today. Just a little bit of um, further housekeeping. If you are with us live, then just to say if you could keep your microphones on mute whilst the speakers are talking, that would be great. Um, we do have the chat function um, available um, and welcome you to use that for any questions or reflections that you've got. There will be a Q&A after the speakers have spoken today. Um, and during that, please use the chat to ask any questions or unmute yourself to, to ask it. Um, we're really pleased to welcome you to the second in this series of um, seminars brought to you by the Parkrun Research Board. The Parkrun Research Board is hosted at the Advanced Wellbeing Research Centre at Sheffield Hallam University. It consists of academics and researchers, practitioners and parkrun staff, and its purpose really is to oversee high quality research activity linked to parkrun across the world. Um, we'll pop a link to the research board website into the chat so you can have a look there or, or just simply Google us and, and you'll find us. So in our last seminar, we talked about the return of parkrun. Um, and, the re and the recording of that seminar is available on um, the AWRC YouTube channel. Again, we can post a link to that in the, in the chat for you to catch up with. So in today's seminar, we're gonna explore findings from the world's largest study that has looked at running during pregnancy. And we'll also hear some firsthand experience of a parkrun pregnancy journey. So I'm going to kick things off by introducing our first speaker. It's, it's a real honour to have Professor Andy Shannon join us today. Andy's one of the longest standing Parkrun Research Board members. He's Professor of Obstetrics at King's College London, based at St Thomas's Hospital, and is Clinical Director of South London Clinical Research Network. He specialises in clinical trials, in antenatal and intrapartum care, and he's published over 500 peer-reviewed research reports. And most importantly, he loves Parkrun. So over to you, Andy. Great. No, thank you very much, Helen. I'm assuming you can see my slides and can hear me. Nice, happy nod. So that's good. So really great pleasure to be able to talk to you. Um, apart from the fact that I get to miss an hour of my clinic, I get to talk about something I have a huge passion about. So thank you. Um, so this is a seminar which I'm delighted um, we're, we're talking about because it's something that I've had strong feelings about. I'm just going to show you the reason I knew Meghan Markle was pregnant when she was first pregnant a couple of years ago um, was because of this announcement um, that she wasn't going to uh, climb up Sydney Harbour Bridge. And I think that sort of very typical modern society response to pregnancy, you have to wrap yourself in cotton wool and not do things. Um, and I think that's a sort of a sort of lesson for us about how we respond to pregnancy. And I just want to explore with you in the next 10 minutes or so, the evidence base around this sort of um, view and uh, particularly about running in pregnancy and, and what we actually know about it. What I've experienced with my um, people I look after um, as an obstetrician and with many of my colleagues and friends is that there's this attitude of, you know, mothers to be being branded as selfish because they exercise and want to do stuff for themselves when they're pregnant. And this type of um, report, I, I'm not a big Daily Mail reader, but I go to it for a source of uh, topical information and you can see that um, here's a mother being branded a selfish cow for running and this is something that people say to me you know I, I, I feel very guilty of doing this and actually um, I think it's a, a very good thing. Now this came on my um, 
sort of uh, Facebook just the last week, I think, saying here's a, a, an elite athlete still training and competing at a high level when uh, 18 weeks pregnant. Um, and of course, these there are some lots of anecdotes of these uh, athletes who, who have been very successful while pregnant. So we have this sort of conflict of reality and people's perceptions. Um, now, this is an MRI of a baby. Um, I actually do a lot of research on MRIs and just thought it was a nice picture to illustrate the, some of the issues around what babies do in utero. They are actually fully formed, normal, healthy human beings in a very protected environment. Um, and beyond 12 weeks, the baby is fully formed. It's actually incredibly difficult to harm a baby. Um, you know, we have these lessons from thalidomide and other things. And yes, there are issues around the intrauterine environment, particularly in those first few weeks when very subtle things can, can cause profound problems. And as far as running is concerned, if you get, for example, if you get a very high temperature in a distance, long distance athlete, that might not be good during organogenesis, which is that sort of, you know, six to eight week time in utero. But when you get beyond that, um, actually the baby is very protected and unless you have some direct trauma like it would be to any person um, these babies are looked after biologically and physically um, by their mother um, and I just want to show you another one here's one we have of uh, two babies cuddling up nicely in the uterus um, kind of doing normal baby things while pregnant now this situation where you have women running in the park is now very common. And I just want to explore the evidence base. Many organizations now, including the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, the British version, and another, do recommend very similar advice, which is it is okay. Indeed, it is desirable to stay fit and exercise. And we know this reduces certain problems, for example, blood pressure issues, glucose intolerance, um, and the baby is likely to be better off and the mother is likely to be better prepared for labor. And we do recommend that this activity continues on a weekly basis using accustomed levels of exercise. And if you don't exercise previously, start up gradually, but, the, but not to avoid trauma. So if you're a rugby player or a horse rider or something, then I think you need to take a little bit of care so you don't bump the bump literally because there are, there are issues of, of causing trauma in utero. I want to share with you a study we did. In fact, when I first came up with this idea, I approached Tom Williams and, and this was really the birth of the Park Run Research Board because I said, this is a fantastic resource that we can use to find out something useful to help our park runners. And this um, is a picture of Natasha, who's one of the uh, doctors who helped me with the study. We were concerned that running might be a little bit different. There are considerable forces through the femur, um, there's jolting in the pelvis, um, there may be pressure put on the neck of the womb, on the cervix um, during this running, um, and also we know that blood flow to the uterus is very sensitive to changes in blood flow from the mother. Um, in other words, everything that if she's kind of feeling tired, the, the uterus gets that direct impact because there isn't this auto-regulation. So we decided to kind of look at this. The other thing, of course, is there are many, many women in Park Run who run. And I found this quote just this morning, um, 7th of March, which I think was probably the last Park Run, probably. I see, I see Mike nodding. Um, there were this was celebrating International Women's Day. Um, and indeed, that there was over 150,000 women running that day, many of reproductive age, many who are planning pregnancies, many who are actually pregnant. And I know a survey from Park Run recently back 2018 had over a thousand women saying they were running while pregnant. So this is a reality. Um, we wanted to investigate whether pregnancy affected, uh, whether running affected when you go into labor and whether it affects how the placenta works, i.e. the growth and well-being of your baby. Um, so we actually used an internet based questionnaire and, and as always park runners responded fantastically to this um, and women recall stuff really well about their pregnancies they know the weight of their baby they know the date they went into labor they know the complications so although this was a sort of review of um, recall bias potential etc cetera, etc cetera, we know it's very reliable data and actually we we collect data um, uh, we had so many people respond, we were able to stratify this, um, not only by 
um, when people stopped running, but also by the intensity of what they did. So we divided it up into the um, trimesters they stopped running. We also divided it up into how much running they were doing on a weekly basis. And we worked out when they went into labor and we did what we call a birth weight centile for the baby. And what that means is we actually individualized what the weight should have been for that mother if everything had been normal, taking into account the gender of the baby, her ethnicity, her weight, her height and so on. So it was customized to each individual woman and worked out the centile of what that baby was when that woman ran or continued running throughout pregnancy. Um, so it was a, it was quite a sort of detailed analysis. And first of all, we had 45% of our park runners decided they weren't going to run in pregnancy, 55% continued. So we had a direct comparison between these two groups and roughly, you know, 30% continued right into the tw third trimester after 28 weeks, uh, a quarter stopped in the first trimester. So we had a nice division of being able to analyze when people stopped running. And as you can see, 40% were running over 12 kilometers per week. And we were able to divide that up into intensity um, to get some results. And the really exciting thing was absolutely no difference whatsoever when people went into labor with very tight confidence intervals. And therefore, pre running did not increase the risk of you laboring early. And that was really nice to be able to say. And it didn't matter how much you did or to what intensity. Um, the birth weight centiles were slightly lower than average, average being 50%, but still completely normal. It's bad to be too big and it's bad to be too small. And I suspect healthy runners um, have slightly healthier babies and that you know 46th centile is probably healthier than 50th centile for the normal population but again running and not running made absolutely no difference to the weight your baby achieved and it was really nice to be able to say that and it didn't really matter how intensive it was. We did do some secondary analysis and we have to be a little bit more cautious about all the secondary things we looked at but one thing we did find you were slightly more likely to need an operative vaginal delivery. That means a forceps or a von twos. And experienced obstetricians will often tell you that athletic women will have very good pelvic floors and they may have trouble pushing the baby through the pelvic floor. Now that might sound like a bad thing, but these types of deliveries are actually quite easy as opposed to difficult forceps pulling a baby out of the pelvis. Some, some data that's just come out from the American Journal of Bob's and Gynae has looked at progress of labor in, in people who are fit and have been exercising in pregnancy. And interestingly, they have quicker first stages of labor. That means up to 10 centimeters dilated, but they have no difference in second stages, which I suspect is related to their tough pelvic floors. So although that might sound like a downside, I, don't, I think basically means you're normal for that and you're better for um, first stage of labor. So we concluded that running in pregnancy is perfectly okay, has very little effect on your placental function, regardless of um, intensity, and, you know, may have a, a, a effect on your pelvic floor, which is probably a good thing uh, in terms of your incontinence and other issues, but um, slightly higher chance of needing a lift out or something like that. And this population, of course, are very typical of the general population who exercise as opposed to the elite athletes. And here was Natasha, who actually was, this is her running when she was 38 weeks pregnant, and she gave birth to Rafferty uh, two weeks later. Lots of lovely quotes from many, many women, and this is a very just ordinary, typical quote. At four months, I ran a cross-country league race in a local park. We decided to cycle there and back through the woods. I felt like superwoman by the time I got home. And I mean, it was just a real good feel good thing to do. And here's here's the publication if anyone wants to read it. Um, lots of other research coming out now. I just want to in the last minute or so share that with you. Big meta-analysis of vigorous exercise um, meta-analysis here just been published. And these are women who are exceeding 90% of their maximum heart rate regularly into the third trimester. And again, absolutely no evidence um, that this vigorous exercise affects the health of, of pregnancy. Um, we've actually written this document for our professional body um, to, to about exercise and pregnancy. This is for obstetricians and gynecologists to read if, and it's freely available if you actually want to look at the nuts and bolts of the science behind the evidence. Um, there's this podcast I did with Tom Williams, which I think is still available if you want to hear us chat, chatting about this. And I do want to show um, a picture here of one of our Parkrun board members, our very own Chrissy Wellington, who um, 
did a one and a half hours of high intensity exercise all pregnancy, um, as well as lots of other wonderful things and had a perfectly healthy, normal pregnancy and outcome. Um, so now we have the Daily Mail quotes saying the opposite, which is it's perfectly OK to, to do this stuff. Um, here are the publications. I'm very happy to chat later. And I'm 20 seconds over. Sorry, Helen. <laughs> No problem. Thank you so much, Andy. That was really great and very, um, yeah, informative. And we've we've had some really nice um, comments from from people who've shared, you know, their positive experiences, which is which is really really great to hear. And also, um, thank you to 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 those who have added some extra resources on there for people to read. Um, we we can share the the link to Andy's research um, project in the chat for anyone. Um, to read and also Andy if there's any other documents or any of the, the, the findings of papers that you want to share then please pop them in It'd be for anyone to read. So we'll, we'll come to um, Q&A at the end if anyone's got any questions specifically for Andy please pop them in the chat or have a think about what you might like to ask him at the end but we're next we're going to move on to talk to Emma. So welcome Emma McKinney who is um, a senior lecturer at and researcher in the Interdisciplinary Centre for Sports Science and Development at the University of Western Cape in Cape Town, South Africa. Um, she's been, been involved in disability research throughout Africa and she's the Disability Specialist Ambassador for Parkrun South Africa. And being a paramedic is one of the two Parkrun Emergency Medical Coordinators. Emma's completed 264 parkrun events and volunteered 214 times. So it's really great to, to welcome Emma to talk about her personal parkrun experience. Great, and let's try to get this to full screen. So um, yeah, no, thanks very much. So this is very much a personal account of my experiences doing parkrun and I'm going to make no recommendations, but this was my journey. And so, um, well, starting off, I just happened to be at the best park run in the world, um, Rondebosch Common in Cape Town, South Africa. And um, yeah, as, as, as Helen has said, I'm very active, involved in both the research side of things, but the actual running it and volunteering is really important to me. And that was before my, um, and that was before my pregnancy and during my pregnancy too. And yeah, so I managed to do more than 250 and waving my flag. I deserve to wave that flag, but um, yeah, it was a huge accomplishment for me. And um, yeah, so, so, so as Helen has said, very involved in disability, trying to make our park runs more accessible and include everyone, including people with disabilities. So um, yeah, I've got some friends who have visual impairments and they helped to tow me up hills. Um, yeah, so just trying to make our park runs more inclusive of everybody, including disability and women and people who are pregnant as well. So just a quick brief background about me. Um, I'm yeah, married to my husband, Vic, who just happens to be a wheelchair user. And um, yeah, unfortunately he can't do many of our park runs, but um, yeah, disability is my thing. So my journey started off having to do IVF to fall pregnant. So when people say, when, oh, do you know roughly when you were, uh, when you became pregnant, I can tell you the hour and the day and what the weather was like and how hard it was to stick needles in my tummy. And so, so for me, um, my journey, I knew exactly when I was pregnant and there was some discussion about, oh, should I give myself a break and not do park run or should I wait until the safe period? And for me, as um, yeah, um, Alison um, put in the chat, listen to your body. And that was what got me through my, um, my decisions. Do I don't? I just listen, how am I feeling on a particular day? So for some days, I felt like a blubbering whale fish. And so I did not run. I did the volunteering. So I also do sign language interpreting for deaf participants. And so sometimes that's all I could do. Some days that was too much and I would just sit and carry the, the keys around with me and help to collect the keys for, for runners. Um, but I just had to do something for park runs. So whether it was running or volunteering, just for me keeping active. Um, I was very, very nauseous and morning sickness did not last for mornings. And for me just being out in the fresh air, being around other park runners and encouraging people was just what really helped to my, my mind um, as well as my body. And, and when I did run, um, really enjoyed it. My times. I decided to listen to my body. If I feel like pushing it, I will. But if I feel like waddling around like a duck, that's what I'm going to do too. So um, towards the end of my pregnancy, um, these are my two 
or well, actually had three um, three people who kept me company, a 92-year-old Alex and an 89-year-old Jack, and they were my, my company. So if they can do it, and Jack's actually got his um, 250 shirt now. Um, so if he can do it, I could do it too. And um, so what happened was um, the only rules that I had with, with Jack and Alex was I could do the park runs with them as long as I didn't go into labor. That was the rules we came up with. And so ironically, on a park run four weeks before I was due, I was waddling around and I thought, oh, these Braxton Hicks are quite something. Um, but deep breathing and I'm out in the fresh air and um, wow, these Braxton Hicks are quite something. So I did the responsible thing. I did another lap because it's a two lap course. And after the 5K it finished, feeling a bit damp here. So let's be responsible and go get myself checked out because I've still got four weeks to go. No way the baby's coming now. And so I drove myself to the labor ward and gave birth. So um, yes, that happened within 12 hours, um, straight after a park run. Um, I didn't have time to change or shower, but that was okay. They've seen everything. And yeah, so this is my little Benjamin who was born straight after a park run. I, I like to call him my almost park run baby, but there's Benjamin and my hubby was there throughout the, throughout the birth. And yeah, I was uh, fortunate enough to have a natural birth. That's something that I wanted, um, but also going for whatever is best for me and for baby. And um, yeah, it was, it was a, a difficult birth, um, a natural birth. Um, yes, but um, I'm very glad to have yeah, my, my, gone through the first part of my labor <laughs> at a park run. <laughs> that, that, that's better than walking up and down the labor ward, get out and about in the park run. That just worked for me. Um, and uh, yeah, this is just a picture of six days later doing my next park run um, with baby on the outside to a very surprised Alex and Jack. Jack was, I just can't handle this. I'll just be behind you just to make sure that you're okay. Again, should women be doing this uh, during their pregnancy and should they be doing this with a newborn? For me, this is just what I needed to do. So um, that was six days old, Benjamin, me getting some fresh air and yeah, be back with the people who I love and um, support me through my pregnancy. Um, as I said, some days I would walk, some days when Benjamin got a bit heavier, I popped him in a pouch and walk, and some days, as I said, just collecting, <laughs> just collecting the car keys was, was all I was able to do. And um, yeah, and then also just, just to me, this was leading into um, healthy families, healthy communities. So this is my eldest son doing his park run, his first park run as well. And um, my little one, that's Benjamin now, doing his first park run he was just over because we don't have junior park runs so we had to do the full five kilometers and this was his first park run I did have to carry him a bit but um yeah just talking about building communities building yeah families um participating in park runs also important lovely picture of a dad carrying a newborn giving mom a break so mom could run and um yeah just welcoming communities for everybody because those little people that we carry in our bellies are eventually going to be park runners um, and that, that's just the whole cycle of park run that is open to everybody. Um, and for me, my quote that I always use is that I run away from my family to come back a better mom. Thank you very much. Well, oh, thank you so much, Emma, for sharing them some really beautiful photographs as well um, to, to kind of show your experience. Um, so if we go straight into the, the Q&A, then um, I'm sure people have lots of things they want to share or ask. Um, feel free to put them in the chat, but I will also welcome anyone to unmute and ask a question to um, Andy or Emma um, kind of live. Um, I'm going to just while people are thinking of any questions, I'm just going to pick up um, on a couple that we've had through. Um, so for, for Andy, Mike was asking about research around returning to exercise and running following birth. Um, you know, what kind of research has been done there and what recommendations might be. Um, and I've seen helpfully that um, we have had some running guidelines for returning to running shared, which is great. Thank you very much. Yes. Andy, have you got anything I mean, you like want the, to add? The reality is, is that there's not that much research uh, as always. Um, but I think the principles are, it, from a physiological point of view, it is amazing how quickly the body bounces back following a pregnancy. Now, if you continue to breastfeed and estrogen levels are lower and so on, then it may take longer, um, but as as always, if you have maintained reasonable levels of activity during pregnancy, then it's absolutely no reason to not continue. You know, all, all and obviously, if you have issues with your progesterone causing your ligaments to be very lax, and you have issues with you know 
things we call SPD and pelvic girdle pain and whatever, then obviously you've got to listen to your body. I think that's a big theme coming out in the chat, listen to your body. Um, but as far as your cardiovascular system is concerned, and this kind of 40% of blood returns pretty much back to normal in, in, in hours almost, um, and everything else recovers very quickly, if you carried on a custom stuff and gradually build up to, to pre-pregnancy norms, absolutely no reason to be worried. Great, thank you. And just on the on the topic of research, then I'll just go into a question that's come through from Jill. Is there any data relating to the improved health and fitness of children whose mothers ran during pregnancy? No, so, so no one's done those sort of longitudinal studies linking exercise directly to future outcomes, because as you can imagine, those longitudinal studies are incredibly challenging and difficult. But there's a massive literature now on intrauterine environment and long term health of children. So we know that if you are born small for gestational age, i.e. smaller than you should be, or even the opposite, bigger than you should be, of which exercise and running should improve, um, then there are long-term issues. So your hypothalamus kind of resets. And, and one of the causes of like what we call the Barker hypothesis of long-term risks of type 2 diabetes and of hypertension in later life can be directly linked back to your in utero environment. Um, so, 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 so there are very strong reasons why a healthy and utero environment will end up with lifelong health and, and that's not just a sort of uh, call, uh, sort of vague association it's very likely to be causal so the studies are challenging as you can imagine but but i think we all understand now lifelong health really starts in utero great thank you and um just whilst you're on a roll andy do you have any further information about running um, or high impact exercise during the implantation phase? No, not really. I mean, again, um, you know, the really kind of elite athletes, um, often their cycles go ski with and they, they're not ovulating, um, especially people who are underweight. So um, when, when people do conceive, they tend to be uh, people doing ordinary amounts of exercise and, and are pretty healthy in themselves so the body kind of sets itself as being healthy and appropriate to have conception i don't think there's any evidence that exercise per se affects fertility um, and anything kind of detrimental with that that part of the reproductive cycle great thank you um alison um just reflected on the advice to listen to your body and i know that emma emma's talk did touch on that quite a bit um, and she shared her personal experience about perhaps, you know, feeling exhausted and high blood pressure. Um, and it's just a reflection really in a comment with Alison just saying that we need to get a balance between supporting mothers who wish to run and not making those who can't run feel like they have failed in some way. Um, I don't know if either of you have anything to, to say about that. Yeah, well, for me, um, I mean, I know that every park runs different, but in South Africa, we have many, many walkers who never want to get to running. We've got others that walk to get to running. And so it's, it's just about, yeah, I just mean, I found different groups because, I mean, I used to be sort of a 25, 30 minute 5K park runner. And I got to a 53 minute park runner plus um, doing sometimes. And there was just no stigma of, oh, I should be pushing because I, this is the batch I should be with. There was always someone... That's the wonderful thing about parkrun. There's always someone slower, someone behind you, that you are encouraging. Um, so for me, yeah, just just yeah, just just encouraging people to walk if they need to walk or run really slowly if they need to do that. Just listen to your body again. That coming from a guilty fat cow. I, I love that attitude, um, Helen, about just doing um do it for fun and do it because you want to. Um, you know, basically saying don't. If, if you don't want to, it's absolutely fine, but you mustn't feel guilty not doing it. You mustn't feel guilty doing it. And when I go to Cape Town, I notice the average park run times are like minutes slower than anyone else. And there's people, and I thought they'd all be lunatic exercises. So they do it for fun. And the same goes with pregnancy. If you're having a difficult time, it's not your fault. Just take it easy and listen to your body. I think that's such a good, such good advice. And that really fits with the ethos of park run. Park run is about getting out there being healthy, enjoying yourself, and, and don't, don't feel pressured about performing or, or otherwise. Yeah, brilliant. And I think Emma, you know, highlighted that wonderfully that, 
you know if you don't feel like doing the run walk on the day there's volunteering you can do and um there's many different ways that you can get involved with with the parkrun event um so um one of my questions was um I know your research, Andy, and what you said is that you know people are accepting now that running is 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 completely fine during pregnancy. But um, I'd I'd say that seeing a heavily pregnant lady running during you know um, is still a relatively rare sight. And what what do you think we can do then about maybe fear of judgment from others or you know people passing comment perhaps? I mean, is that a thing or is that maybe an unrealistic worry that some people might have? I mean, I'd like to know what Emma thinks here, but, uh, you know, I'm sure there are all sorts of guilt things that go through pregnant women's minds on all sorts of areas, which, which are a bit taboo and they don't talk about it. And, and when you do start having a dialogue like we are right now, everyone goes, oh, yes, you know, I was worried about that. I was feeling bad. I had that kind of look from my mother-in-law or whatever um, that shouldn't be doing this um, and I think just being open and frank and honest about one the misconceptions um, is all a start of this and I think the message is now getting out there and people accept that this is okay to do and a lot of my colleagues even my professional colleagues will feel nervous about you know uh, recommending stuff that they're not sure about um, so, so it has to be both from uh, fr from the professionals as well as well as everybody else Emma, do you, do you agree with that? I do. And I mean, I had a couple of, of dads or um, whose part, well, men whose partners were, were pregnant said, wow, um, I didn't know that this was okay to do. Let me go chat to my partners. And um, yeah, just, just and, and other people think, oh, well, like maybe I shouldn't be. This other other pregnant woman would come to me and say, oh, wow, um, this is a thing. And, and and it's not only just for pregnancy, it was, it was great, but also just from word of mouth, from um, prenatal little groups as well as antenatal groups as well we've had a lot of moms coming now with babies um, on their chest just getting out um and yeah so, so i think it's, it's going to take time there's definitely that stigma but just for me for my mental well-being being out was just so important as i mean i was never an elite athlete <laughs> ever but um just for me i just why must i stop doing something that i enjoyed and that i love and that's so good for me um just because of the um, with child um, and just for me um, obviously different if you've never exercised before maybe starting and sprinting a park run might not be the best thing but just listen to your body and um, yeah just just as I said for me it was community being surrounded by people that I love and um, yeah just for me it, it, it was just a whole package of, of reasons why I should be doing this. Oh brilliant yeah I was just going to pick up on that point Emma about um, people that perhaps haven't ran before or been particularly active before pregnancy is the guidance different or again is it very much around listen to your body do what feels right yeah you're, you're on mute Emma. sorry i'm um, just thank you <laughs> you would have thought that by now i've got that um and also just maybe just look at the route that you're choosing and um, just for me i mean Ron Bosch common is flat and boring but everyone gets a personal best just, just look at, at your fitness levels, look at how you're feeling on the day and just maybe pick a route that you feel comfortable with. Um, that, that's my only advice. What's interesting, Helen, is that the, the professional bodies actually actively encourage you to exercise, even if you haven't been, which, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, and they do, you know, stipulate that by saying start up gradually. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's good good to be fit um and apart from anything you know one of the one of the most difficult strenuous events you need to go through um, um will, will be labor and i think having having exercise during pregnancy and being ready for that can only be a good thing great stuff um thank, thanks for that i'm just i'm just looking at some some more of the comments tom thomas says thanks for your presentations it would be interesting to hear qualitative evidence in research of women's experiences of exercise or parkrun postpartum um are you aware of any more qual research andy yeah i mean what well, when we did our um, survey of this you know nearly 1500 or 1500 women we actually had a free box and the quotes from that are amazing i mean 
absolutely staggering. Um, lots of very worried women about who'd had problems and then blame themselves, but also many opposite, like, you know, isn't this fantastic? So I, I think it would be jolly good for us to go through that and maybe try and publish that in a qualitative journal because the, the, the what I learned from those experiences were just staggering. Um, I mean, there were people doing half marathons every day up until the day they delivered. Um, and there were the, uh, and you know from the sublime to the ridiculous um and suddenly we being able to tell everyone about it and feeling guilty about it was just fantastic from their point of view so there's a whole wealth of uh, personal experience that's come out in those statements that we, we perhaps should look at particularly as a, a parkrun group and regarding the the feeling guilty um yeah i pushed the baby out and the guilt came in that that's that's what i've learned and just, just just focus on what what works for you and um yes there's going to be guilt and everyone's got wonderful things that you should be doing that you shouldn't be doing but um when in doubt yeah just for me just i had a really good relationship with my gynae and would, would just yeah just say this is what i'm thinking is this a good idea and she was very very supportive of me doing park runs and is a park runner herself so when in doubt get advice I mean, one thing about parkrun, and I think, which is sometimes underestimated, everyone assumes it's kind of a run, but, but, but all of us know it's much, much more than a run. Some of the closest friendships that pregnant women make is often with their pregnancy groups, you know, the NCT and these other groups. Um, and I think it's because of that bonding at that time in their life and sharing stuff. And I see parkrun as being a really good sharing place for pregnancy. Um, you know, in the, in the same way. And that, that's exactly what Park Run's about. The thing I miss most actually is the coffee afterwards, not the run. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure there's, you know, everyone's kind of chomping at the bit, hoping for return at the end of, the end of this month so that that can kind of start up again. Um, thanks everyone for, for the comments. Um, I know that, um, Marley's, uh, apologies if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, is sharing loads of, of really good um, information. So thank you so much for that. She's, she's just kind of summarized it nicely here. She, already active, keep going. Not active, start gradually with the golden rule being if it feels pleasant, keep going. If it's uncomfortable, stop and seek advice. Um, so, so thank you for that. Um, yeah, thanks, Marley. There's some really great stuff you sent. I'm sorry we haven't got time to kind of share it all, but really great. Yeah. Um, we've still got a few minutes if anybody does want to add anything um, or, or unmute and, and share any thoughts or questions. Um, we've got really nice feedback and there's, there is that there is does seem to be a consensus that, you know, this this um, guilt is a thing. But hopefully, you know, the more conversations like this that go on, the, the better that that will be in terms of sharing the messages and, and challenging some of that. Helen, one thing I'd like to just mention, because I think it's a good public health issue, um, and, and, and this is often a bit taboo, is, that, is the problem of pregnancy losses. You know, miscarriages are very, very common. You know, they, they occur in, you know, one in four, one in three of all women, and runners will have them all the time. And there is a, a huge kind of association that drives a lot of guilt. There's absolutely no evidence that there's a relationship between the two. Um, and people just shouldn't worry because they are going to happen all the time. Um, and I think that, that that's worth saying. The, the only detriment that I can see is if you are an elite athlete doing these long distances, running sustained high temperatures, where we know high temperatures are linked to problems in the developing baby but only at that critical time at the beginning yeah and just just to pick up on that I'll just um share what Alison said earlier um so she said I found Andy's research really interesting especially the comment that the highest risk time is in the first 12 weeks a significant percentage of women don't plan a pregnancy and may not realize they're pregnant in the early weeks so could be running oblivious to pregnancy status it's reassuring that running appears to be relatively safe. Is there anything you'd like to add to that, Andy? No, I, I think, you know, you, you have to kind of look look after yourself when you're pregnant, of course you do, but I, I, I think physical activity is, is a plus, not a minus um, when it comes to pregnancy. Um, and of course, some women, I think going back to the point about, you know, mustn't feel guilty. Some women will have problems and they'll have to spend weeks in hospital uh, and their body will deteriorate. Um, 
and you know you just need to be patient and take more time getting back to it and, and not worry about it should you be unlucky enough to be in that situation great and so our very own steve hake is a new grandfather congratulations steve um and um Although I think this is maybe a, um, a bit tongue in cheek, I think it's actually a serious question in that when can I start pushing a new grandson in a buggy? Is there rules or guidance around that? When you're fit enough, Steve, I think's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so can you can you is a, is a is a baby OK in a buggy from early doors or do you, is it ideally, you know, do you need to wait a little while? No, no, no. Uh, you know, a healthy, normal baby will be fine. You know, right. I don't think pushing around in a, in a, a buggy, you know, when it's cold, you keep them warm. And um, I think it's a great thing to do. But they and mustn't pass me, me. They're always going faster than me. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. And for me in the beginning, I just, as you saw in that picture, I just had my little ones in a pouch. Um, and that's how they, until their necks were strong enough, um, so just do what feels comfortable for you, uh, or actually, Steve, what your uh, yeah, what the mom feels <laughs> most comfortable with. Um, but yeah, no, for me, if someone said, "Would you like me to take your child and you can do a park run waddle?" I'd be go for it. But um, yeah, just obviously making sure the baby's warm, and um, yeah, and, and obviously strapped in safely is another thing. I've seen some very enthusiastic dads taking corners quite quite steeply um yeah just make baby sure baby's warm you might be boiling hot but it's baby warm and it's baby strapped in safety first and get out and that fresh air so all those babies that i used to kind of chat to 2008 they're now running past me at great speed <laughs> it's, it's great park runs like that you kind of grow up with the kids and uh, they get to know you it's fantastic yeah one, one of my favorite things is to watch is to watch dads comparing running buggies on a start line of parkrun and um, checking out each other's suspension. It's brilliant. Um, so yeah, I think there's been really, really great chat. I think we, I hope we've covered everything. This is your chance now, if you've got any kind of questions that we haven't addressed and you'd really like those answering, then please do shout up or put them in the chat. But I'm just gonna do a bit of a roundup um, from today's session. Thanks so much to our speakers, Andy and Emma, for sharing their insights and experience and knowledge with us. And thank you for, for joining us all um, and engaging in the discussion, which I've really, really enjoyed. I think it's been really engaging. Um, the recording will be available for you to watch back or to um, share with any of your friends or colleagues, fellow parkrunners or um, anyone really on the YouTube channel. Again, I think Bryony will put um, the link to, to that. It won't be available straight away, but over the next you know, week or so that will be available on there. So we are doing a seminar series and we will have other seminars scheduled. Um, so keep your eyes peeled on social media and email um, for details of our next one. And yeah, we really look forward to seeing you all next time. Thanks so much. Thank you, Helen.